Okay, so uh, we had really a lot of technical talks today, so I know that anyone is tired now, so I will make something less technical, more funny, or something like that. So uh, I will talk today, what do we, why do we need two eyes? And uh, maybe I will start from myself. Yeah, I'm a JavaScript developer from Poland, the country not so far away from here, on east, west, yeah, on, on the right, on the map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, between Russia and Germany. And uh, I'm open web game developer, and my main topic of interest are games, but we had today a couple of, today and yesterday, a couple of uh, game, game dev talks, so I will try to present something different. And I'm an organizer of On Game Star. That was the first, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that was the first HTML5 game dev conference in Poland last week. And it was great. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I'm creator of, of some kind of ridiculous and completely useless web demos like CSS Niancat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm a HTML5 game dev co uh, coach uh, in W3C as well. Yeah, and that's all. Yeah, I know that's boring, so let's talk about eyes now. Uh, why we need two eyes? First, yeah, okay. First of all, one, oh, sorry, one moment. I have so big ears that it's hard to me to, you know, fight with that microphone. Uh, first of all, one eye is not enough. Do you ever heard of any creature, animal, anything with only one eye? Yeah, we had something like a couple of thousand years ago, probably, and uh, and it's, it's the history now, right? So we, so one eye is not enough for us. And what about three? You ever heard of any animal with three eyes? Yeah, what about cats? What about cats? <laughs> yeah, so usually cats have only two eyes, but there, was one, there is one cat in US with three of them, and maybe I will present some kind of demo now. It's only about 30 seconds, so. Frank Louie is a cat who was born with two faces, so he has two names. He's known as a Janus cat after the Roman god with two faces. And at 12 years old, he's the longest lived cat of his kind, a fact that just earned him a spot in the Guinness World Records. How did his owner find such an unusual cat? He was brought in to Tufts Veterinary School. I used to work there. He was brought in at a day old to be euthanized. And I said, I'll take him, you know, and they let me take him. What was it that drew you to him? He was just so unique, but I, it, had he been a, just a normal kitten, I probably would, would have taken him also if nobody else did. <laughs> Just a normal kitten, I probably would go as long and as So the two outside eyes um, are the ones that see. So um, okay, I think it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, I don't know if you heard that the lady said that the middle eye is blind. So even if the cat has three eyes, the nature forced him to have only two of them. And uh, yeah, two is the answer. And uh, Two is kind of magic number in our culture, and not only ours, because, for instance, back in mid-70s, the, there was some kind of expedition, or how to call it, discovers a village somewhere near, yeah, Amazonian River? I don't know how to call it the river in English, but that's the biggest one, okay, who cares? And uh, they never met uh, any other civilization, and uh, the whole, like, uh, yeah, culture and everything was based only on three numbers. They knew only three numbers. One, two, and more. And uh, yeah, that, that makes the number unique. Okay, so what about our eyes and brain? Uh, eyes itself are not able to see anything. It, it does, you know, uh, the eyes are just like lens or 
kind of, kind of tool for our brain to analyze the images we see and tr and uh, produce the scene we we can remember after that. So, for example, uh, yeah, our eyes are had about five centimeters space left between them. So, basically, uh, what we what we see all the time are two images in the same time, right? I think if you're younger, you try experiments like putting your fingers on some object close one eye, yeah, and the finger is in the same spot, and now, oh no, it's about you know, a couple of centimeters uh, on the other side. So, yeah, and it basically looks like that. So we had the view from the left eye in here, view from the right eye, and our brain is analyzing the images and creates the scene we, we, we can see after that. And, uh, and that, okay, uh, anaglyphs. Uh, what are anaglyphs? <laughs> uh, anaglyphs are images because, yeah, basically, basically everything in uh, 3D, in game development and in stuff like that is about cheating, right? So we try to cheat our brain. So we try to, mm, yeah, we try to combine two images from two separate views into the one. And we use glasses like that for, for this because in here, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, because in here, when we manipulate with the colors of one image and manipulate the colors of another image just to disable the red one in, in that one for the, right, for the right eye and the blue and green for another one, we can provide each image to, to separate to separate uh, eye just using the glass like that, right? So, and I think it works, like, I'm, I made it yesterday during the conference and... Okay, so, yeah, it's kind of fresh stuff, right? No, it's old as hell. And uh, so, basically, the anaglyphs are as old as the photography itself. We, we call that the science about creating three-dimensional images, stereo, stereo, stereoscopy. Yeah, sorry, it's li really late now. And uh, that is the first photo ever taken by a human being, by, by, by the human, and it's from back 1826. And uh, yeah, I think that one is better because that is the first, the first uh, photograph with the, with the people on, on there because uh, it took really a long time to, to you know, create something like that, and only the one guy in here was, was cleaning his shoes, that's why he was standing there a couple of hours, and that's why he's on the photo. But talking about anaglyphs, in the same year, in 1938, uh, in England and in France, in the same time, there was, they, they, they discovered that, that things I was talking about before, that if you provide two separate images from the different angles to, to your eyes, you will see the scene like, the stand like a third dimensional. And first, they, uh, they created images like that and used, uh, yeah, I don't know the English word for that. And we call it photoplastic in Polish, but I think it's not, not the proper one. And because in here you had as, one moment, as you can see in, okay, here in that lens you provide the uh, image for one eye, for the left one, and for the right hand one in here. And uh, just a couple of years after that, uh, they discovered that anaglyph techniques I, I, I talked about before. And that was the first anaglyph image taken ever. In, it was like 1901, something like that. And uh, just after the people discovered that we can make photos, but we can also make like moving photos, right? We call it movies today. Uh, they create one of the first, yeah, that's not the first one, but one of the first three-dimensional movies ever. And yeah, that is, now is the part when you will watch it and I will drink some water. It was like, like grandfather of Avatar. 
or something. <laughs> okay, so how, how it really works. Uh, let's take two images. Yeah, it's from some kind of Mortal Kombat uh, fan art or something. Uh, two images for, for uh, our eyes. That is the image from our left eye. Yeah, left. Yeah, left. And that is for the right one. And uh, we can manipulate each single pixel of the image. So let's remove all the red channel from, because the colors uh, are constructed from three channels, right? right uh, red, green, and blue. So let's remove all the red color from that one and leave only red one on the another. Yeah, uh, the opposite. OK, who cares? And then we have to combine the images into the one. And anyone use Photoshop in here? Ever? Yeah, OK. So we had something in Photoshop like blending modes. So you can, you can uh, just determine how one layer is, uh, how one layer is uh, you know, interacting with another one, with top layer with the bottom one. And uh, yeah, so basically we had uh, yeah, it looks like that in Photoshop, but we had a simple, simple formula for uh, achieving that in uh, yeah, using pixel manipulation. Because as I said before, we had three, the, each color is combined from three different, different channels, so we can just manipulate the, the number values of the, of the pixels and we will construct the image and it will finally looks like that. It works? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, I know that it was fun, right? But it is JavaScript conference, so let's make some live coding, maybe. <laughs> and uh, I know that live coding never works, but I will try. So, basically, uh, hmm, I have two images from uh, my last trip to Mars, and <laughs> and they were making make in the same time from that funny thing you can see in here because it has two lens on on, on that like two two separate photo cameras, so it it is the same the same view but from a little bit different ang uh, different uh, angle, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, I prepared a single document with my own awesome implementation of jQuery in here. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, and, uh, and it is in here. So, basically, whoa, it's really, okay, maybe like that. Uh, so, we have something we called Canvas. Yeah, you heard of them? Okay, and uh, we don't want to the images to be displayed on the page, so... Oh, no. This will be easier at that. Yeah, it works. Nothing is displayed in here. So <laughs> now uh, let's use our awesome jQuery to take the left image. And uh, yeah, and the canvas. And uh, let's draw. Yeah, we need the context as well. So let's draw the image, like the left image. Oh, yeah, first of all. Yeah, I know it's ugly, but it works, right? <laughs> yeah, and uh, we draw it in the same point in the origin, yeah, and it works. So now, 
<laughs> hey, hey, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you can tweet about it. And uh, now, we have also something like uh, image data. So, we can take the image data from our canvas, from whole canvas, right? So, uh, and then, uh, from the image da data, we can take the data of each pixel. So, yeah, uh, I hope it was something like that. <laughs> and yeah, uh, for now, yeah, okay, no one, I hope no one will notice that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and now, uh, we had an array with the pixels, and uh, yeah, and it then should be like that, for sure. Okay, so the first element of the array is the red channel, the second one is the green channel, then the third one is blue, the fourth one, for yeah, then the next one after the third one is, is the alpha channel, and so on. So, uh, we, want, we are not interested in here in the green or blue channel, so we just want to uh, clear the red color from, from the image. Okay, and after that, we want to uh, put that data, uh, that data into our canvas. Yeah, so that is the image without the red color. Awesome. And now, uh, yeah, no one will notice it again. We will, yeah, we don't need one, that one. I don't. Okay, so now we create an array. It's like really big array because each pixel is represented by four values in here. And uh, we will remember all the pixels. <laughs> okay. Because we need it, we need it after after that. So uh, we had our yeah, good cat. I was testing you. <laughs> and uh, now we will draw another image, like the right one. Yeah, I love jQuery. <laughs> It's so easy to use, and just 70K of code. Okay, uh, what's now? Sure, so uh, we now draw another image, uh, the red, the right one, okay. Yeah, and just, just testing if, yeah, sure. And uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we made basic, basically the same thing in here after after drawing another image, but after that, we will leave the red pixel alone. Yeah, we don't need it at all. And we will clear that. Okay, and let's try if it will, yeah, it works. So now we have two images and we have to combine them. And we have to use that magic formula from here. So the result color is like some thing of two other colors. Yeah, so. Uh, basically we had the red pixel in here, sure. And uh, now, but the top color is our, well, not like that. 
Sure. Uh, the top color is in here. Yeah. And the bottom color is that one. And it works like that for all the channels. Uh, yeah, I hope it will work. And yeah. <laughs> what? I don't heard what you want. Did you? <coughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, blah, 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 blah. In, in here. Yeah, as I, as I said, live coding is never, yeah, but still. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, who cares? <laughs> Voila, it works. <laughs> Okay, so let's back to the slide, slides. Uh, and that Batman is also anaglyph. I made like I spent like three hours to paint them. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah. So basically, what we what we've done now, uh, we just clear completely the red color from the, one chan from the one eye view and the r green and blue from another one. But not, that's not the only way to produce anaglyphs because we have other types of anaglyphs, like true anaglyph. And it, that is the formula in here in which, yeah, you can, uh, that, that was, yeah, I don't really know what, what this one was used for, but for example, that Gray anaglyphs was used by NASA um, to producing three-dimensional three images from that photos I've, I've already shown you. Uh, but yeah, we, we don't have colors in here. Also, that is, that is anaglyph we used, the, just with the simple values. And that is the optimized one, and probably that it has the, the, best, the best results, and I will show you one, one demo after, I don't know, 30 seconds. So, uh, what's more, we have uh, like anaglyphs in our browser. So someone creates a jQuery plugin. Yeah, it's not a plugin. It's more like a, more like a snippet. But Yeah, and it, it looks <laughs> like three-dimensional text, but it's really hard to read it from, but, but, but it works like. And uh, other thing, yeah. So uh, I showed you just uh, during, just a couple of seconds ago, the optimized anaglyph, and it's used in WebGL uh, animations. So the guy, Mr. Doop, I think everyone heard of him or, or his, oof jobs, uh, well, yeah, or his uh, projects and stuff like that. So uh, he creates an anaglyph demo of a renderer for WebGL. So it's completely uh, calculated on the shaders. So you just make your own WebGL application as, as yeah, as you would drink before and just put one additional file for the renderer. And it, it creates additional camera and uh, calculate the colors on the, on the, on the shaders. And yeah, really nice, isn't it? <laughs> okay, uh, I know that anyone is tired, 
So uh, that will basically be the end. But no, <laughs> I have one more thing to, to uh, present because, as I said before, I, I, I really liked and I really enjoyed creating very stupid things in the web. In the web. So a uh, couple of uh, couple of months ago on Mozilla demos party in Helsinki, I created CSS NeonCat, and uh, and now it has. And now it has an ugly background. <laughs> okay, and that's basically everything I have to say. Thank you. Questions for Michael? Thank you. Oh, no, really? Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think you had a question. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait a moment, because... Sorry, I'm a complete noob with um, 2D graphics. So how much of that can be optimized by the GPU? Is it Perfectly optimized. Is it? But uh, you, you said about that WebGL renderer, or no? The, the composition on canvas. The composition on canvas. I think it's you know it's, it's just a pixel manipulation, so it's way faster than just drawing images. And uh, for example, I don't know if you heard of uh, Impact Engine by Dominik Shabalevsky. He creates one of the best HTML5 game engines ever, and he don't he never used draw image function of the canvas. He just you know, manipulate the each pixel for uh, rendering the sprites. So I think it's 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 quite uh, good optimized. Yeah. Sorry, my English is really poor now. <laughs> I'm really tired. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>